Quick LSF clip. <clears throat> oh God, I saw this. I feel so bad because isn't Hans like, isn't this guy literally like 18 years old? So he like, if I'm being totally honest, I would have easily been this egotistical when I was a kid. Like I can't imagine like how pumped, but like, damn, what an asshole. But I mean like, he's like an age appropriate asshole, but. Something. Okay, what's the uh, entry fee? 10 bucks. Is it free for GMs? No. GMs of the entry fee. I don't care. Oh, uh, I can't play, man. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm a grandmaster. And you're not willing to play? There's internet. Grandmasters don't pay entry fee, man. That's a that's a thing. I'll give you a discount. I'll give you 50% discount. Ah. Uh, but you gotta, I, I you guess gotta my, donate I get, to the fucking club, man. My, 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 eight, my eight years of work to grandmaster means nothing, then. Oh, it means something. <laughs> well, it should mean a free entry, because that's what? what every tournament organizer does. But it's okay. I respect it. I'm not, I'm not on, trying man. to be... Come we're, we're hustling here. Man. You know, but, but grandmaster we're, should always get free entry. Okay, but half the proceeds are donated charity. You're not a oh, it's person here? I don't know it's charity, but still, you know, it's a, it's a, it's just a matter of respect, but, you know, uh, it's, it's okay. Have a good day. What's your... Botez response for the Hans clip. I actually agree with you. I'll give you a discount. I'll give you a 50% discount. Uh, but you gotta, I, I guess you gotta my, I get, to the fucking club, But man. it's for my, my, charity, My eight years though. of work to Grandmaster means nothing. Okay, man. okay. I understand why people are upset because it's for charity, but let me just say that what I think people... I see both sides. What, what I think yeah. people don't understand is that when you're... A Him being there, like, makes the, cha makes the tournament more prestigious, or...? Grandmaster, you have dedicated so much of your life to being the best level at chess and it is an industry standard that you get some kind of respect back Exposure. when you get a grandmaster who's playing in your tournament it's a really big deal that they're playing so that's why he was upset it isn't about it being for charity or ten dollars for charity should you be granted like that level of respect and shit? like yeah sure but like if you're not like just be chill like when you've reached these levels like because this happened to me a couple times when i went to like there were different starcraft events i would go to and sometimes like people working there would have like no idea who i am or whatever and sometimes people like oh what this is destiny or whatever believe it or not there was a time when i was a biggest streamer in the world and i played starcraft and this was a decade ago but it was there right but like the people that if i'm interacting with somebody who like doesn't know who i am or if they're trying to like do an id or badge check or they're trying to whatever like <clears throat> you're in such a better position than anybody that's talking to you like you've made so much money like you can pay a fee or show an ID or do whatever. Like, you're okay. Like, it's literally nothing to you whatsoever. And then, like, why not give that person a positive interaction with somebody that is, like, quasi-famous or, like, high or whatever, like, uh, and, and whatever. Like, it's just, there's no reason. Like, this, it literally feels like, it literally feels like a, do you know who I am? Like, kind of thing. It's like, damn. Like, your GM shit, like, speaks for itself. And I'm sure if you were being invited to, like, a bigger prestigious bougie tournament, like, I'm sure that you would, like, I'm sure people would probably want you there. They'd waive the fee. But if it's, like, a random night, like, yeah, like, pay, I don't know. I, maybe it's just a difference in backgrounds. Like I said, I can't imagine getting gassed up that hard when you're, like, 17 or 18. Like, that shit is crazy, but, I, like, just because of my background, I feel super uncomfortable when people want to do shit for free for me. Because, like, because there will be people that will try to enter me and shit or whatever, or, or, like, oh, like, people will invite me to things or whatever. It's like, oh, like, we can get you in first. Well, it's like, okay, I don't want to, like, skip a line or, like, not pay an entry fee or whatever. Like, I can wait. Or, like, I have the money to pay it. Like, it's fine. Like, why the f*** would you give this shit to me for free when I can afford it? Like, easier than 99% of the people. Like, I think you just chill. Like, pay your shit. It's fine. You're going to be okay. You make a ton of money. You've got a ton of prestige. Like, it's probably better off with someone else. I don't know. Maybe that's just... Nightclubs would allow people who are celebrities in for free rather than get them to pay cover. Supposing you're in this position, would you still pay the cover fee? I mean, like, if it's, like, a super established practice, then I might not. But, like, if somebody doesn't recognize me, like... I'll pay. I don't care. Like, if there's, like, because it used to be back in the StarCraft days, there are a lot of clubs and shit that you could get in for free if you had, like, if you were on a list or if you were on a whatever. And, like, so if somebody, like, loses something or if somebody doesn't know who you are, if something happens or whatever, you know, it's like, oh, blah, blah, you just pay the cover and go in. Like, it's not a big deal. Like, who cares? Like, it'll be, like, 20, 30, 40 bucks. The, like, depending on, like, what the event is, what you're talking about, it's like, it's not a big deal. Like, who the fuck cares? Like, you, like, the establishment can use the money more than you can. Like, who, it's just not, it's just not that big a deal. Like, rather than, like, making, like, a huge stink about things or, like, hold on, wait a second, go call them, blah, blah, blah. Like, damn dude just like just chill like your life and again maybe it's just a matter of perspective but like your life is so good you are living at the top one percent of the top one percent right you're in a western fucking country you're like at the top of the income you're at the top of the prestige you're at the top of your game not like a video game but like of like what you're doing career-wise like everything in your life is going about as well as it can be you're living a picture-perfect life it's like five dollar entry fee to a tournament it's not a big deal like should they know who you are should they enter a grandmaster for free like 
Yeah, maybe. They probably should, and it'll probably even benefit them. But, like, just that interaction, like, who does that interaction leave, like, better off? Like, nobody, right? Like, they're not going to have a good view of him. He doesn't have a good view of them. Everybody at that tournament is probably going to have a negative view of him. Like, I don't know. It's just so dumb. Like, I don't know. I just, yeah. Do you think this will hurt his reputation in the professional scene? I feel like some people wouldn't want to interact with him in the future. I don't know. It might be that chess players in particular are, like, very haughty. Because I know that, like, Kikadu has, like, problems. Um, and I know that... Um, um, there's that other guy that made videos who's like really crazy. I, I think it's funny, but they're like, I mean, they, there might just be like really egos might run huge in the chess community, maybe, you know? I'm not sure. It might be that Feinstein guy, yeah, but Feingold isn't crazy, it's just banter. Oh, maybe it is. Maybe it's just banter for him. Do you think that kind of entitlement is ever justified? Um, <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe it depends. I mean, like, there are times when entitlement is fine, but just like when there's such a huge power differential in these situations, like, I don't know, it just feels like, I don't know, just be chill. Like, everybody's better off for it, like... I've found people will view you as a lot cooler person if you just act like everybody else, and then people find out who you are if you're a quote-unquote somebody. I agree, for sure. Thanks, buddy. And then you also, you have, I think you, I think, I think that actually, in a roundabout way, will, like, get you more respect. Because like yeah, I've had, I used to have those scenarios pop up in the early StarCraft days, and then I'll be chatting to like somebody else like later, and then my name, my gamer tag name will come up, and then like a guy that like checked me into the door will say something like, "Oh fuck, like oh you're Desi, I had no idea, oh my god," I'm so, and they'll be like yeah. apologetic and shit, and they'll usually be like really chill, yeah, and and then it makes you look better because you're like chill, it's like oh yeah, you know it's cool, dude, it's not, it's whatever, it doesn't matter, like I don't expect every fucking human being to know who the fuck I am, and then you you yeah. just you leave like everybody with such a more positive impression of you, yeah. I, I learned that in college trying to talk to girls <laughs> because if I led with, hey, I'm on the football team, mm -hmm. they immediately had a preconceived notion of, oh, this guy's a fucking douchebag if he's leading, if I'm leading off with that. Yeah. Whereas if I just talk to somebody and I'm a normal human and they like me for my conversation skills and blah, 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 then when my big ass teammates come up to me and they, you know, it's like a big name player, they're like, oh, fuck, you play football? And it's like, yeah. Yeah, and then you have like, it's like a bonus. Yeah, rather than the defining part of your personality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If that's what's talk, I'm fine to talk to him. I'm not like nervous about debating someone. It's not a debate. <laughs> uh, like I, I, I made it to the state championship debate. Like I, I, I'm, if you want to talk, we can talk. We're all ready for John Tron 2.0. No, it's not, it's just, it's not, we're gonna, it's just, know, it's, <laughs> it's not even anything to talk okay, about. Okay, now, now let's go back. So now I find out it's charity, right? Now when I hear it's charity, I stop when I decide to go. I say, okay, I respect it, I'm leaving. Now, the charity part is what's used to make me look like a total asshole. But before the charity part, when I start, ta we start talking about it, I was debating purely on the principle and charity was completely uninvolved, right? I just want to say I am so fucking glad because, uh, it, it, I, I understand like the internet did I'm, exist I'm when i was 17 really I don't think I think or was in a much different game. capacity and oh, i was man. watching this live by the way so i was in the chat because I, i'm I, I want i'm curious to get another opinion like i understand that i should be you know more understanding i i think i could give him context you should just bring him in here no he's not coming in here dan you dumb f this is not a drama farm for you okay you already, <laughs> you've already added to the stream enough, okay? Let's just, let's just see if Destiny actually sticks to his morals, or if he's a f coward. He's like, oh yeah, I guess so, you know. And these kid gloves, if they come off or not. With this guy okay. that I'm talking to about now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, of kid course gloves. it's gonna be a gentle conversation. Oh, what do you okay, mean? These, okay. Like, a, okay. what do you God mean? God forbid, God forbid. What do you think the conversation's gonna man. be about? Oh, no, like, I'm, I'm uh, just, guys. You f up, uh, you f up. There is no thing, you f up. It's not a huge f it's just like it doesn't a little... have to be a huge f up. That doesn't Wait, have to be. What are you guys be. debating about? I about this dumbass like, entry fee he, bullshit he or whatever. It's not even or... like a huge thing. Is he gonna be like, oh, I'm debating a kid? Like I'm turning eighteen entry like a month. Like... <laughs> oh God. Uh... What? He just said. Are you gonna call me or? I think he just said, I'm not a kid. I'm turning eighteen yeah, in a month. Oh, <laughs> that's so cute. Kill me. Okay, um, I'll be right back. Yeah, I said, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I saw your, your clip. Um, my chat would, would, wants me to talk to you about it.
Sure. So, um, wait, real quick. Can you turn your volume up for Discord? I've got you at 200%. You're still really, really, really quiet. Oh, uh, yeah. One second. I don't really have like a setup. I'm on a pretty scuffed setup right now. I'm on max. You know, uh, Hopefully it, on Discord or the mic, there should be like a volume thing somewhere, maybe? No, I don't even have a mic. I'm using mine. <laughs> Well, there should be a microphone <laughs> on the computer unless you're telepathically sending your <laughs> audio yeah, to Discord, I, turn, I imagine. I, I just turn it up. Okay. Is, that, is that better? Yeah, this is okay. Okay. Uh, well, what's up? How are you doing? Yeah, so, can you maybe summarize what you thought about the clip? Because I didn't watch the whole thing. But, um, uh, yeah, I mean, like, there's a lot of different, <laughs> there's a lot of different dimensions um, I, yeah. that we can discuss in terms of how to do this. Um, to, to be, like... I guess to be to be super clear, and I hope I didn't give it an otherwise an impression of my thing. I don't think you're like a Hitler or the worst person in the world. I know that when there's like online drama, like everybody goes like f crazy, um, in terms of like absolutely hating people or thinking people are like the scum of the earth or whatever. Um, but I, I do think you're being a little, maybe a little ego driven uh, to the poor chest dude. Um, so I, maybe I can start with giving you some context. So maybe I can explain it. So, mm -hmm. um, so what I first want to say is that. I understand how I acted made me come off as like a, you know, ego driven. And, you know, I think I will say a lot of grandmasters do have ego complexes, right? Sure. And I, I, you can debate, you can debate about how big my ego is, whatever, right? I'm mm -hmm. not saying I don't have a big ego. I think as a to be a good chess player, you have to have an ego, right? But the point that I was making, it was not about me validating my own ego as a grandmaster. It was more the principle um, of grandmasters getting respect, not me personally, but setting the standard and the, you know, um, the precedent that grandmasters shouldn't pay entry fees, um, regardless of what type of tournament it is. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So that's uh, that's context that I see a non-chess player not understanding. Um, and so, more yeah, so let me, so I can give you some kind of, I don't know how much you know about my history, but I was a professional StarCraft player. So I'm, yeah, no, I know a bit yeah. about it, yeah. So I'm going to guess that there's probably a lot of this type of prestige and stuff that carries over between like, um, between esports and chess and any athletic event. Uh, now there's going to be varying levels, but like the attitudes are going to be similar. Um, so I guess like for me personally, if let's say that I had gotten invited to like some um, like some big tournament that was being hosted by somebody famous. I knew they were had a lot of sponsors, they were running ads or whatever, right? Um, I think my expectation for how I would be treated in that tournament would probably be a little bit different than if it was like a random person that didn't really know much. So like, let's say for instance, um, let's say like Total Biscuit was running a big tour, or something that's not dead, or it wouldn't matter, I guess, because StarCraft. Let's say that there was a guy that's running a huge tournament, right? And he's reaching out to invite like famous streamers and players, um, and, he, and he, you know, he. After you get like drafted for this tournament, like, oh, you have to pay like a $25 entry fee. You've got to pay a $5 entry fee. I would be like very like, wait, what the fuck? Like you invited me to like your big tournament. Like you've got sponsors, you're making money. Like you're charging me an entry fee. That's, that's really fucking weird. Like these tournaments don't yeah. work without people like me. Like, what are you talking about? But if I went to like, um, if I was at like the University of Texas at some esports event or some shit, um, and they have like a like a little local like, oh, we're doing like a StarCraft II land, like a you know 128 man bracket, double elimination, like oh my god, like we heard, you know a couple friends said you go to StarCraft, you should join. It's a five dollar entry fee. They don't know who the fuck I am. They probably don't know hardly any like professional StarCraft players. I wouldn't expect them to. And you know, I like the game and I want to be an ambassador for my game. Um, so yeah, I'd probably be like, okay, yeah, here's like the photo entry fee, like that's cool. And I've been in situations like that in the past where there'll be like people who like, um, with cats and we did a couple lands and they'll charge both of us like entry fees and we'll be talking to somebody later and, and somebody will call me like Destiny, like, oh fuck, wait, that was Destiny. Oh my God, we didn't even know. Like, we're sorry, we didn't blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, it's like chill. I think that like, I think that when you're working as like an ambassador for your game, especially especially with like smaller organizations or entities that aren't like these hugely profitable things, I think it's probably okay to let a little bit of the prestige slide. Um, and then I think at the end of the day, I think you end up giving like a better impression to like everybody as well. Like, uh, because like imagine if you had played and you finished like first or second, I don't know if other grandmasters are playing or not, but you do like really well. Like there's probably a lot of people in that organization and in that tournament that would come away with like a really positive impression of you, right? Like, oh my God, like Hans, he's like a 17 year old GM, he played in a tournament, like, you know, he paid the $5 entry fee or whatever. Whatever, like, and everybody would come away with like a really good feeling. I think, you know. Okay. Yeah. So there's a few issues. So you did highlight an interesting parallel, but there's a few issues with the parallel. Mm -hmm. So first of all, the reason why you would be invited to a StarCraft event is, would you say it's more for your accomplishments as a skillful player or as like your streaming 
thing? Um, it would depend on what part of my career. So it could have been either, but it, it just it really depends. I mean, there was one point in time where I was like very competitive and I think I could compete with anybody in North America. Um, and then there were other times where I was just really well known as a streamer. So it would depend. So were you ever like a professional StarCraft player and relying on your StarCraft competing as your sole income? Um, yeah, I was on a professional team. I mean, I went to Korea no, to was that your a little bit. My sole was income as a starter player? No, probably not. Like, was that, would you, could you have ever been at a point to make a professional living from being competing as a starter player? Uh, j probably not, no. Very few couldn't. Okay, okay. So there's a bit of a, I guess, a difference in sort of levels of, you know, the competitiveness. But, okay. Additionally, so that's fine. But the main reason of why I'm playing is I'm being solely invited for sort of my grandmaster title not actually being like, you know, a content creator. Like for me, one thing you need to understand is a lot of grandmasters are totally broke if they're a competitive chess player. Like, are you familiar with that or? Uh, like, it wouldn't surprise me. Like I, I imagine chess is like relatively niche. It's not like there's a fuck ton of money in the chess scene or anything, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. so a lot of the, the main reason why it's sensitive for more sensitive for grandmasters than Starcraft players and the difference between esports and, and chess like from a holistic standpoint, chess might be more popular, right? Or more widespread or recognizability, but the money in it compared to esports, on a, you know, in some levels is, is really non-existent. Mm -hmm. So as a grandmaster, my income is not from playing, right? My main income as a grandmaster is from streaming. I haven't really streamed in almost five months. I was in Europe playing tournaments. You know, I was, you teach, but a really big issue that I wanted to highlight in chess that I could have illustrated better, and obviously my attitude, you know, prevented me from fully illustrating that. Mm -hmm. A lot of chess players are sort of treated poorly and given poor conditions. And uh, a good example is in Europe, every single tournament I played, my hotel was paid for. I had some sort of pocket money for my flight and stuff, and I was treated like an athlete, you know? And I was given the respect that I believe I deserve and all other grandmasters deserve for dedicating their lives. And I think another difference you need to understand between chess and StarCraft is, I don't want to undermine the difficulty of StarCraft, mm -hmm. but to become a grandmaster at the age of 17 or at any age requires a dedication of your entire life, not just playing, you know, a little bit, but there are a lot of sacrifices you have to make, a lot of time you invest, and a lot of times you get absolutely nothing in return. And to give additional context to earlier on in the stream, I was talking to like an old man and he told me a story of how three consecutive world chess champions, you'd think like I, the, the world StarCraft champion, the best starter in the world is probably a multimillionaire. Maybe. Right? Maybe at the maybe. very, maybe the Who very, not? very best, but not like a GM equivalent. No, definitely not. No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not, I, that, I'm just saying mm -hmm. it's even, even really, really great chess players, the best in the world mm -hmm. are, some have died in poverty, right? And that's an issue that's more personal to me um, and something that I felt the need to talk about. Now, sure, real quick, I understand this and like, this is this might sound like kind of mean, but I mean like, you no, you shouldn't be, you're not playing chess for money, right? Like, <laughs> the, the chess scene no, is not like no. a massive scene where you're, anybody's gonna become a millionaire unless you're maybe like one no, of the best in the true. world. That's not, well, okay. No, that is true, so, right? The chess scene is not this massive, thriving scene, right? Like, it might have had some research on Twitch no, YouTube, no, right? Well, so, no, 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 you'd but, be surprised. Well, you'd be surprised. Hold on, you can't, wait, careful, because because you, you're you about to contradict everything you just said. If, you, if you're saying now there's a lot of money, you just told me that tons of people- At the highest level, no, I'm, I'm gonna get to it. I'm saying for an average grandmaster. Okay. But I'm, okay, but I'm in a unique situation because I'm 17, right? Okay. To where, there are certain scenarios, like in America, grandmasters aren't treated that well, right? And there, are, it, it depends on a broad. Like, mm -hmm. For example, if I were to continue to have, you know, do well and pursue my opportunities, like the reason why I can do well as a grandmaster is because I have been able to market myself as a streamer and do other things, right? Yeah, this is but similar in StarCraft still, as well, where like really high pros would like give lessons and shit and we charge like 50 to 100 bucks an hour or whatever back then in the day, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the main point is that if you set the standard of grandmasters having to pay an entry fee, despite, regardless of, this is a rated tournament. This is a ranked tournament. Mm -hmm. I understand it's a tournament in the park, but this tournament is USCF rated. So it's going to like, it's a ranking tournament, you know? Like if I were to play 
I w no one would be like close. Like I'd be risking, you know, my my ranking or my to play against significantly lower opposition. And I understand like it's for charity, but I don't feel like I'm obliged to do that, right? Like I understand it's for charity. I'd be happy to go by and give them twenty bucks or whatever donation I feel responsible or whatever charity it is. If I have a personal connection with the charity, then I it's it's all relative. But the point is that when you set the precedent that certain chess players shouldn't get the respect for the amount of hard work and dedication and accomplishments that they've achieved, you're disrespecting all of their work, right? Yeah, I can so, understand this. So to the earlier point, I didn't really finish. The earlier point that I was going in terms of there not being a fuck ton of money is that there's generally, so as somebody that's seen at least esports from like all three sides, you've got the player side, you've got the team side, and then you've got like the tournament organizer side. Chances are if players aren't making a lot of money in a particular thing, the organizers and everything aren't probably making a lot of money either, right? So my guess is gonna be like the people working at that park, if I had to guess, and I could be wrong, there's probably like a 50% chance that that dude was like a fucking volunteer, right? Like he got, that guy might not get, be getting paid anything at all. And then like the whole organization itself um, is probably making very little, if any money, and might only be existing or subsiding on like donations. And then well, like no, all the people- fifth, One thing, 50, it was 50% to charity, it wasn't all to charity. Sure. So they were mm -hmm. taking in some, um, sort of, sort of profit, um, or I, maybe they were. I don't know, but it wasn't. Anyways, continue. Sorry. Yeah, I'm just saying that like all of the people involved in this are probably like I don't think there's anybody getting rich off of chess. Like it's oh. not like the players themselves are getting fucked, and like the tournament organizers and all the organizations that are working, they're getting like so much money off chess. Like it's probably like that's, no, really, no, that's actually know. not true. That's not true. That's not true. What's not so, true? I'll give you an example. So again, a lot of people aren't going to be knowledgeable about this, but there's in in, the, in America we have one central chess organization that organizes all the tournaments. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, this organization is called CCA. It's the Continental Chess Association. Now, I'm sure no one in your chat or any knows what the hell I'm talking about. Some people in my employ know, and this organization sets the standard of never paying for any GM's hotel, never paying for any flights never paying for absolutely anything at grandmasters right mm -hmm. and they've set that standard across america and in europe the standard is the complete opposite right so all these organizers they take in like really significant entry fees and these organizers are making a lot of money but if you're a grandmaster and you want to make a living off of playing tournaments you're going to go to a tournament you're going to pay for your own hotel you're going to pay for your own flight you're going to pay for your food and you're adding so much to the event, and the organizers are getting, giving you absolutely nothing in return. Yeah, so like in and the in the event that you're like a grandmaster getting invited to an event that you have to like travel for or some shit, I could understand. That's what that was like the comparison I used earlier. If like somebody was inviting me to an official tournament in like Europe or some shit, like at the very least they're going to cover my flight and hotel, right? Of course, um, and I can understand that because you are adding a lot to the event, right? I imagine most people want the prestige of having grandmaster players playing in their event. Um, I just, I'm not sure, I guess like for an event in the park, it just, for a guy that probably doesn't know all the grandmasters or whatever, I think it just, I just, I don't know if you accomplish much at the end of the day by kind of, I don't want to say grandstanding about a rating, but being like, oh, like I'm a GM, I don't pay like this, like you just come off as like a, kind of like an egomaniac, even if like, I think that some of the points that you bring up are, are, are more valid. Um, yeah. Well, the, the main thing was if you look at early on in the clip, mm -hmm. I said I was grandmaster and the guy said like, I don't care. So that was sort of the first thing that, um, I don't know, it's just the chess world, you can honestly, I just see how there's fine line between respect that you let you think is a given and then being an egomaniac and thinking you are like, it's like your God given right to have this, you know, respect as a, as a grandmaster, right? But the, the, the main like point is, is, is that, you know, I'm not obliged to play their tournament. I don't have to to do anything, you know. I, the guy didn't sure, even say what charity was, you know. Do you think there's so a chance not, that, like, do you think there's a chance the guy just had no idea that that's like the standard? No, he, no. Of course, every organizer. If you're organizing an event, you know, uh, my chat is playing is mostly maybe more chess players now. But mm -hmm. if you were to ask any chess organizer in America, and you would say to them, okay, you have a grandmaster approaches you, and they say, I'm interested in playing in your tournament. Are you going to give me free entry? I would say 95% plus, maybe even more, will not even bat an eye at saying, oh, of course, I'd love for you to come play in my tournament. I'm gonna give you free entry. Um, I, it's, I, I'd love to have all these other opportunities to promote my tournament having a grandmaster playing. And I think it'd help the tournament 
get more players, raise more money for charity, right? Mm -hmm. That's what any other organizer would do. Yeah, and I believe you when you say like organizer, but I'm talking like a random dude that's like man. No, 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 this isn't a random dude. It, this, this guy is, he said he was associated with some chess club or something. So, and again, I'm saying the, even CCA, the one I mentioned, mm -hmm. gives free entries, right? But in CCA, they subtract it, right? So like, let's say there's a $200 entry, okay? Mm -hmm. I get it for free. But if I win like a thousand dollar whatever prize, they subtract two hundred bucks from it. Okay. Um, so it's like you have a safety net. That's sort of the, the principle, and even that is an American standard, not a you know uh, European standard. So I think that sure, my time in Europe being treated very well and never having to worry about playing a tournament and just a, and having the hotel mm -hmm. maybe has made me more you know less it was more of an extreme reaction right i i can understand that and mm -hmm. see how if i wasn't just in europe for five months like even now i'm going to play a tournament in chicago in in a few days i'm paying for my hotel i'm paying for my flight but i'm pl i'm paying for that because it's the standard there's nothing i can really do right i can criticize the organization i you know a lot of the conditions you know, I don't know how nice. What is like the background of this park tournament? Were there like famous people invited to this, or what is like? Oh no, the... no, no, no! This is this is just a ca it, it was pretty casual. It was ranked, but how? Can, like I'm just curious. Guys. I'm just asking because I don't know. How easy is it to just throw a casual ranked tournament? Oh, uh, you need to have an arbiter. You need to have someone who's officially licensed to oversee chess games, um, and you need to sort of invite players. You need boards. You need clocks. It takes more than you would expect like for, from an equipment level like everyone if people are bringing their own clocks and boards maybe people are you know you need an arbiter which you know there, there's there's quite a few things that, that you need it's not like some it's not like if you're sitting at your home and you want to play a chess tournament with your with your friend and you say okay we're going to play a chess tournament mm -hmm. like it doesn't really work like that you would need to like get a, a clock you would need to, to, to get an arbiter to come you know it's I understand how the, the park gives off this, um, you know, really casual connotation, mm -hmm. which sort of inflates the um, my not wanting to like pay it. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe that again, again, I totally am not like blaming people for their reaction. I will blame people who write like a hate thread and DM me and like sell these nasty things. Like mm -hmm. obviously that's not okay. Yeah. But yeah. the reaction, considering the lack of context, I can understand from a perspective. But I think it's also a byproduct of toxic internet culture, the reaction that I, I did receive. Sure. I, so, like, as somebody that, like, just watched the clips and uh, doesn't know very much about, like, the professional scene in chess, I still think, I, I don't think it's a, <laughs> just, I don't know, like, making a big deal about, like, paying entry or not. I don't think it's the best idea there. But the, the way that the clip looks, just from a layman's perspective, is it basically, like, a bunch of guys are just kind of throwing up for a fun tournament in a park for charity, and you're just, like, waltzing in, like, telling them that, that you have to pay, like, an entry fee. Um, and, and then, or, or that you're like, oh, well, I'm too good to pay an entry fee, like, fuck you, to, like, a bunch of, like, random people in a park, like, having a tournament. That's, well, like, the impression. I think I understand that that's not exactly as it's going on now that you explain it now But that's like I think that's the impression that a lot of people got from the clip So it probably explains in part a lot of like the vitriol and everything Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. I, I understand how it looks, but it's people sort of I think there's You know the I think it was blown out of proportion as well. Yeah, and everything on LSF will be yeah, of course Well, it's just LSF right and I, I used to be on LSF when I first was was growing mm -hmm. I was on LSF a lot you know, and I, I've experienced similar hate threads like this, you know, it, it, not this time, like before it's like, you know, me raging or during a game. It's like, it's, it's the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I don't think the, I, I think that I really want to make the distinction very clear between what the actual issue was and the fact that it was never about charity. It was never about the money. It's not about five bucks. You sure, know, there's like, like a grander issue solely, that you feel. Yeah, I understand. Was, no, but like it's when people are sort of making me this sort of like, you know, villain, egomaniac, mm -hmm. they're centering it around the fact that not that I was maybe sore, maybe I was not as respectful as I could have. I don't think he was very respectful either. Mm -hmm. I, I left right as he mentioned charity. Like I said, I, I right as he mentioned charity, I said I respect it and I, and I left. Like, sure. That was it. Um, I think that it's just a matter of like, that wasn't the issue. Uh -huh. Stuff are and getting relatively bad, chilled and boring. When you make it we solely about charity, then people are like, oh, it's Lucky charity, it's charity, and then, it's and then just you a matter of days until he... Back, you know? 
Like, all I really wanted to do, like, you know, that's not really what I'm looking for in, in streaming. I personally am just a competitive chess player. Like, I, pl I stream f for fun now. I'm not, like, some sort of, like, I, I, streaming has been my profession mm -hmm. in, like, six, five, six months, you know? Like, I, I'm not, like, trying to, to do that, you know? So, yeah, for sure. But that's, so that's just all <laughs> I wanted to I think um, something else that kind of like can give people an impression of this as well, and again, it, it might be different in the chess scene, so I'm not sure, but um, I think that something that rubs at least me the wrong way and a lot of other people, and not, and not saying that you're like being, again, Hitler or evil here, is that like a lot of the people that do, for esports especially, I don't know if it's the same case anymore, but a lot of the people that do kind of like the, um, like the player registration and moving players to where they need to be and and a lot and outside of like the very 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 tops of these organizations a lot of these people will be volunteers that don't even really know that much about the organization or about like um like the sport like they might just be like casual fans or they might literally be volunteers or hired workers brought on to like move people around um and i think that sometimes it's easy to get that impression as well that like that guy might not like I know that you say yeah. that, and, and I, again, I could be wrong, but because you're saying that like, well, all these rules about GMs not paying, these are standard, people know that. It's like, maybe it's not. Maybe the guy was a volunteer and he truly did. Maybe he likes chess and maybe he's even part of a chess club and stuff, but maybe he's never met a real grandmaster before. Maybe he doesn't know that these are the standards and he's only done like a few like school chess tournaments or whatever, so he's never heard of it. Like, yeah, I don't know. I think I think it's worth airing on the side of caution. Outside of like professionally like hosted events, we've got like major organizers or sponsors involved just in case, because you don't want to, otherwise you just, you risk like leaving a really, really, really bad impression in people's mouths for no reason i think yeah yeah um yeah well no the guy i knew the guy i'm sure the guy mm -hmm. it's chess but he said he was 1600 and in chess terms you're not like serious but you're like you know enough to know that but it, but it's fine uh, the, the thing that i think wait is it real quick is gm like 2300 or 26 oh or no 2500 feet a okay um there's there's a world ranking which is feet a there's a uscf ranking that's about um, or maybe 150 points more. So mm -hmm. like, he's he's not like an, he's more than average, but I think he, you know, I mainly think I was a bit sensitive and I and I overreacted. Like for me, I think I've been so I haven't I've been gone from this sort of streaming. I've been used to like, like I'm sure for you 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 don't really seem to moderate yourself that much. Mm -hmm. like, I think I actually like like before streaming, I watched you a bit because you were like you didn't really seem to. Sen not censor yourself, but um, you seem to sort of just speak freely. Yeah. And I think I've, like, coming back, I was a bit less like, oh, like, I'm streaming. I spent six months, but since I've been used to, like, streaming, and I have to realize, like, okay, like, you have to be a bit more careful about, like, what you do. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, I don't, <laughs> like, I think it makes me look like I'm just some bad person using your charity. But, like, I don't feel the need to dress up on my, like, people were telling me, like, oh, People were saying, oh, yeah, you need to, like, write some full, you know, apology. You need to go donate to the charity. Like, I feel like that would sort of embolden it because, like, I've done charity streams before. I don't feel the need, like, to sort of totally defend my character because mm -hmm. I feel like people who generalize my character based off, like, a 40-second clip, you know, they're the problem, not really me. Um, yeah, especially with, like, the Higadu stuff going on and everything. Like, people have, like, really weird impressions of, like, ego-driven, like, uh, streamer chess people, I think. It, it puts everybody in a weird spot. Or people are probably, yeah, like, yeah. more quick to make a big assumption about your character. Not saying that his character is bad, by the way. I don't know. But, yeah. No, 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 no. I, and I think another contextual thing, like, as a chess player, I've sort of dealt with... When you're a competitive chess player, it's a really toxic world. Mm -hmm. And I spoke with this earlier in the stream, but I think the reason why I was so... It was a bit more sensitive to me because, like, when I was 12 years old, um, like one of them, like a parent of like a uh, one of my competitive chess players, posts on Facebook saying how I'm like some terrible person and like like a hate thread about a 12 year old. Right? Mm -hmm. And then a bunch of like other total adults. Like I look back on this like five years later, and I'm reading like a bunch of adults like speak about like, oh yeah, like I wonder how much Adderall he's on. I wonder like why does he sit on his like really weird things for an adult to be speculating. Mm -hmm. So I think I am just a bit more sensitive to these types of sort of generalizing, like characterizing, you know, people off like small things, you know, but I think I'm used to it in some ways, but the chess community is really sort of 
toxic in that way mm -hmm. in terms of character. Yeah, a lot of online communities are. I guess, like, you're always going to get, depending on your personality type, you're always going to get a lot of shit for being mean to anybody ever, literally. Um, I, I guess, like, the kind of the mentality that I try to have is I just try to match people's energy. So if somebody's being, like, a huge dick, like, I'll just, I'll go off as hard as I can, because fuck it. Um, but if people yeah. are trying to be, like, relatively polite or whatever, I try to match that. I'll try to be polite back and then whatever. Um, yeah, because, I, 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 like, at the end of the day, I don't think... Technically, I don't think any of what you're saying is wrong. Um, it probably just would have it would have played like way better for everybody if you would just been like, oh, you know, I'm good. Thanks for the uh, offer. Like, I don't want to play. And then as you walk away, you kind of explain, and it's like, I don't really feel comfortable with the idea that like it's really hard to make a living as a GM. You've got to invest a lot of time in this. Like, you know, I could have went to school. I could be working a normal job. I could be doing other things, but instead, you know, I'm you know doing everything to learn chess, and now I have to pay entry to like fucking like very small tournaments as well. Like, that's really brutal. Like, I think that that explanation probably wouldn't have left anybody. Um, like too mad or there might have been a few people but it would have been way less bombastic than like what looks like you're fighting with like a random civilian in a park trying to brag about your gm status yeah. right yeah no, no, for sure for sure mm -hmm. and i think that's all just it's just all about context and yeah. i don't yeah. like i think people take it too far but you know I, I i understand it but i think this was constructive to hear to your opinion and mm -hmm. I, I i am like aware that um like being away from streaming has made me a bit less socially aware about um about certain things as a streamer. I'm not like used to, I'm really so out of the the streaming world right now. Sure. I, really, I was streaming maybe like an average of like three hours, four hours a month, mm -hmm. if that. So anyways, but no, I, I appreciate your opinion and, and you know, I, I do. Yeah, well, no problem. Remember, if it ever feels like there's like a lot, um, all of the online drama, people literally forget about it in like three days, so. So it always seems like it's yeah. kind of like the end of the world and everybody fucking hates you, but like in three days, like people have moved on to the next like XQC getting arrested by some cop clip or some dumb shit or whatever, and nobody will be talking about it anymore. So, I it, it was pretty like there there are times when I'm like yeah like fuck streaming like for me it's I'm not really going to like I decided not to go to college mm -hmm. so it's sort of a it's sort of a crossroad for me like I can continue to pursue chess professionally mm -hmm. at a financial detriment or I can sort of supplement it with streaming. Um, and then try to balance it. Um, yeah, for sure. But, I think the supplementing is probably really good too, because like the entertaining like streamers for chess are probably the people making the most <laughs> in the chess world. No, if I had to guess, that's the, right? That's the, that is so. You are you are you're right on. Like mm -hmm. a lot of the, it's funny. There's a lot of like anti. There's a lot of really just jealous and like. Uh, hostile sentiments in the chess world when it comes to like money and success. Yeah, one mil. Like, I mean, it's the exact. So, as somebody that went to school for saxophone, okay, I heard a lot of yeah. this in regards to uh, Kenny G. Every fucking saxophone player that goes to college uh, and especially participates in a jazz program will fucking hate Kenny G because he's like, this is a mediocre sax player at best who's making fucking millions selling bullshit records. And then it was the same in the StarCraft world as well, where um, like, because at, at some point I realized, you know, like you can bust your ass for tournaments and shit and maybe win and maybe lose and there's not much money here. But if you stream, it's way more consistent. But there's always going to be like a ton of people that are going to be like, oh, like you're not a real fucking pro. Like you make your money in entertainment, like you're bullshit. And I was like, ah, you know, maybe. But at the end of the day, I'd rather the financial security than kind of like risking your life, I guess, um, on, on whether or not there's tournaments up that you can win money at and everything. So, yeah. And I, point, and one of the things that I was like thinking about with, with my career, like mm -hmm. I'm going to sort of, for example, I'm going to Chicago to play tournament. I'll probably spend about maybe seven, maybe eight, $900 on playing the tournament. And like <laughs> from a financial perspective, the first part is like $8,000. But then it's like 4,000, 2,000. Like, let's say I have a, let's say like maybe... I have a really, really great tournament, maybe like six to eight percent of the time, or maybe ten. I mm -hmm. win like so eight thousand dollars. But like every single other time, right? I'm gonna like get nothing and I'm gonna totally invest and spend all this time. Like opportunity cost, you know. Yeah, opportunity so cost is huge, yeah. It's, Especially it's, yeah. it's a tough it's a tough decision to sort of decide like I've dedicated and I'm passionate about chess to where I've been really working on it since I was nine. Mm -hmm. Do you anyways, but it's uh, that's that's a like that's kind of where I'm at now, but the, the LSF kind of turned me off. But sure. I do think I, I, sh I could be a bit. I, I can I'll learn to deal with it if I if I do want to continue streaming. But I think <laughs> now I'm gonna have to deal with you know the 
the the five dollar comments for a while but yeah for sure i think you'll feel better after like a week like i said like it always seems like uh, this is like the end of the world it happens every time there's drama because everybody's talking about it i don't know if you've got an instagram but you'll see it like on your twitter your instagram your twitch comments like DMs. lsf thread yeah you DMs. get on fucking every platform and it's like holy shit but then after like one. three or four days they slow down and then people stop talking about it and then move on and everything yeah yeah i'll, I'll take your word for that <laughs> yeah it, you'll, you'll see don't worry all right. Yeah. Well, hey, good luck. Be careful. Good talking to you. <clears throat> yeah, stay safe. Good luck. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Remember to hit that like and subscribe, and don't forget the notification bell so that my videos show up right in your feed. We knew that they sent out physical invites, and we we're like, oh, no way. Like, let me see your invite. <laughs> Fuck you. <c> <laughs> no, finish it. I'm sorry. I couldn't resist. Do it. Finish it. You this. were talking about it. That's who asked.